Welcome to MISS 524 Week 2, and I'm entitling this one, So You're an Instructional Designer, What's That? You've probably heard that. I've had this question all my life, whether I had to explain it to my mother or my father or to a potential employer or to a client. And as I got older, I had to explain what it was to my kids. And hopefully, this week, in the section in our text about defining the field, has helped bring into focus your answer to the question, So You're an Instructional Designer, What's That? Now, what is in a name? We talk about instructional design. We talk about instructional technology. We have a master's program, a master's of instructional science and technology. So what do these all mean? Well, hopefully, the readings gave you a perspective on how these terms came to be and will help you come up with a way of answering that question is, well, you're an instructional designer. What's that? Or what's instructional technology? Or why does your master's program call itself a master's in instructional science and technology? Now, the readings, there were some common themes in this field. All of them talk about having a systematic process. And that's where we sort of talk about the science. There's, you know, a steps, a process that can be repeated and observed and hopefully measured. Another common theme in the readings were that about technology, although a lot of the technology focused specifically on media. and in the old days of instructional uh, technology, we were talking about overhead projectors and motion picture projectors and television. Now we're talking about new multimedia and web-based technology. But it's not only the, the hardware technologies, but it's also the application of them. And it's also the technology, the process, industrial engineering technologies. Um, and then there was another theme in terms of performance improvement, that clearly in the field of instructional design or instructional technology or instructional science, we're looking at improving individuals' performance. Now, there were a lot of different flavors, and the authors and the materials that the authors presented really sort of talked about the different perspectives, whether we're talking about training or whether we're talking about lifelong education or formal education, you know, hard skills, you know, can you weld or soft skills, can you do good interpersonal work? Um, and those sort of softer uh, skills that people learn. Were you dealing with adults? Are you dealing with children? With the adults, are they in a formal education setting like college? Or are they in their job and on the job training with school children? Are we talking about formal K-12 education? Or are we talking about after school programs or that out of school learning that children do, whether it be at camp or at church? So all these different groups and technologies and environments really influenced the way the various authors and the groups and individuals that the authors talked about defined or explained the whole field of instructional design, instructional technology, and instructional science. Now, one of the themes in the readings was that about instructional design processes or models. and. The readings talked about some of the key models, the Addy model, the Dick and Terry model, uh, mentioned briefly the Merrill. You actually worked with the Addy model in the first face-to-face -face weekend. And these models have become sort of universally agreed upon themes within the field of instructional design. But they're not the only models. And in fact, you'll be learning about other models in the course of this program. And taking a little from one model and another model, and eventually you'll have your own model. When I look at these models, I realize these were typically college professors or uh, professional instructional designers who, over time, honed their skill and then published what they were doing so others could share in it. Now, that history really tells you about the individuals. To me, I find this history interesting. Walter Cronkite couldn't understand why students didn't enjoy history, because it was so fascinating. It involved people, wars, state of the world. Well, the history of instructional technology, I don't think, has wars, although there are some uh, theoretical philosophical wars that some of the instructional design kings have talked about. But it's really the personalities of the individuals, whether it be Gagne, Briggs, Flanagan, Skinner, Mager. These individuals and their history has defined the field. And the interesting thing about the instructional design field is that we've kept fairly good history. It's been a period where we're able to observe the history the field is not that old. It really is a very young and emerging art and science. Okay, let's look forward to what you're going to be doing uh, this week. 
you should check out the assignments section of the course website and read and follow directions. You're going to be expanding the PB Wiki. This is going to be your group project. You're going to work on your next Keep Tool assignment, which is going to be a personal website where you're going to answer that question. What does it mean to be instructional designer? What is your definition of instructional design? And then we're going to talk a little bit about how we're going to be doing group assessment for the team projects and generally moving forward in the text um, understanding of what field are you in, what's the history, and more importantly, having you thinking about what direction you're going to be going. Sort of looking forward, the uh, under the teamwork project in the PB Wiki, uh, the the team, the uh, clueless hearts six to ten, really have gotten a good start. They went beyond the personal pages that we talked about and really started working on next week's assignment even before I'd given all the details. So uh, I've included some of the pictures here on this page, and this sort of gives you an idea of the direction you're going to go, where you'll have your individual learning styles, you'll have your individual teams charts, and you'll be working on developing this team approach that eventually will become part of our class project looking at the environmental scan. So looking forward to the remainder of the semester. Have a good day.